JKB back with another episode today in the show I'm reviewing Spider-Man thank you so much to Sony for the review copy. When you think of the last 10 years of comic book films, TV shows, and video games, I can assume you've probably had at least one personal experience that touched you deeply and that experience will be with you for the rest of your life. For me, that experience is this game. Spider-Man does not start with a history lesson on the character. Insomniac Games must have known that the player would already know the backstory of Spider-Man, and I think that's a smart move. The game is not tied into any existing comic books or films or video games, and I felt that I'd be okay with that as long as the story did something new and refreshing. You start out as a 23-year-old Peter Parker who's interning at a laboratory. Peter has been Spider-Man for 8 years now and he's come to terms with the struggles he first faced when he put on the suit for the first time. The story is told in a way to give you this feeling that something major is about to happen in New York City. It's really hard for me not to tell you the story, but I think it's not my job to do that. My job is to tell you how I felt as I experienced the story for myself. And I'd say that the story is one of the major selling points of this game, and also the reason to buy this game on day one. It's everything you'd hope for, the stakes are high. Friendships are put close to the fire, and Peter has to make tough decisions that will leave you on the edge of your seat at times. As I kept pushing my way to the end of the story, I thought I was kind of feeling like a kid again watching cartoons on my lunch break. I used to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles during my lunch recess time at school, and then I'd run back to school and tell all my friends about the episode. That's exactly how I felt playing this game. I want to tell you everything because it's so exciting and the story is just thrilling. I just feel like I'm a kid again and that's great because when I was a kid, I didn't have to worry about great responsibility. Within the first hour, I realized the great power of Spider-Man himself. The gameplay is the other half of the game that goes beyond just being a video game and into the world of actually becoming Spider-Man in ways you've never experienced before. At first, I thought the game was throwing way too much at me. I was confused by the amount of moves Spider-Man can pull off, and the game's UI was not helping at all. I want you to take a second and put yourself in the game, and think about the craziest way you can take down a bunch of enemies. I'm guessing it'll have to do with something with Spider-Man jumping off of a wall and all over the place as he lands punches and kicks, and he's shooting his web at the enemies and pulling the guns right out of their hand, and maybe he's even sticking them to the ceiling to finish them off. Well, whatever you just came up with in your mind, you can do in this game. And I'm dead serious when I say that. The move list will continue to grow as you get deeper into the game, and about the 10 hour mark, you'll be doing some of the craziest things you've ever done in a game when it comes to a fighting system. There's so much going on at times, you have to step back and kind of focus yourself on exactly how you want to play the game. There's different suits that you'll unlock as you play the game, and that's kind of a big selling point for a lot of Spider-Man fans out there. And each of the suits have a really cool suit power that you'll also unlock when you unlock a suit. There's also suit mods that you can install onto the suit. You use these in battle and you can install three at a time on any of the suits you unlock. There's also gadgets that are locked to a weapon wheel that you can pull out during gameplay at any time to change on the go. The gadgets let you change the way your web shooters work for the most part. And lastly, there's skill trees that will unlock new skills for you to use in battle. Now here's the part that confused me when I started playing the game. You'll be introduced to resource tokens early on in the game. These tokens are used to upgrade your suit and the suit's mods and the gadgets. However, they do not work as the skill points. The skill points are tied to the skill trees. You'll get the skill points when you finish missions around the map and those are only used for the skill trees. Now this sounds very understandable when I say it in the review, however when you see how many moves Spider-Man does in the game, and you also see the different ways you can find tokens around the city, you'll feel very confused, but that kind of does go away after you understand the systems in place. At first I thought this would be a problem with the game, but after seeing how much there is in the game, I'm probably going to say I couldn't have done a better job trying to take all of that info and kind of make it easy to understand to the player. So it is good, it's just a little confusing. 
The map is gigantic. I've been to New York City four times and I've walked all over the island from the top to the bottom. And I'll say this, I'm not just impressed with what they've done here because that would be an understatement. The level of detail that I saw in the world during my 25 hours of playtime just is staggering. There's so many details, so many things you will not see your first playthrough, so I highly suggest to go back and go to every single block of this map and experience all of it because it is very impressive. The map is revealed in giant sections and you'll do this by unlock towers in each section. Now, those are kind of overplayed in games, but sometimes the towers are on very tall buildings and sometimes they're on the ground, so the verticality kind of makes it interesting. It's not just, you know, a horizontal walk from point A to point B. You do have to look on the top of buildings and that obviously plays right into Spider-Man's role. There is one thing I want to bring up that is kind of silly. It's one of the major collectibles in the game and that's Peter Parker's backpacks. There's a total of 55 backpacks that you'll find around New York City and it must have been a really lazy day in the writer's room at the studio when they came up with how these backpacks are in the game. There's six different types of tokens around the city and some of them are scientific tokens that can be earned within the first five hours. You'll need these tokens to unlock new suits and trust me once you see some of the new suits you'll be only focused on collecting enough tokens because the new suits kick absolute ass the game doesn't just focus on spider-man you'll also play as peter but these moments are mostly inside when you're required to meet up with another character or look around a location the scientific tokens are only earned with mini games that are small little puzzles that you'll find in research labs all around the map these games are mostly visual puzzles, and at first I wasn't sure if I liked this aspect of the game, but once you get the hang of these puzzles, you'll realize that not only are they used as a challenge in the game, but they kind of kind of bring you closer to Peter and his creative side. And that's really cool to see in the game because you don't really see that very often in other Spider-Man games. I think the biggest question I got about the game was what does it feel like to swing around the city and within the first hour out it was the most exhilarating experience I've had with a superhero game. Now five hours into the game when a mission requires you to get to the other side of the map you won't have that feeling anymore. I realized that the game is not really designed to make you go from one mission to the next. The game does try to push you into doing side missions or answering the call of a random, you know, person screaming out because some crime is happening just down a few blocks. I wouldn't say that there's any problem with the swinging around, but I would say that it's not exactly fun doing it in the game after 10 hours. I will point out though, there's skills that you can unlock that make the swinging around a lot more interesting later on into the game. And that's really good to see in a game like this because it does kind of keep it fresh at the 10 hour mark. The fighting system in the game is one of the most rewarding yet difficult I've seen yet in a superhero game. You can definitely compare this to everything else you've played and you'll be hard pressed to say you found anything original here. However, you'll come away with the most fun you've had when it comes to taking on giant groups of enemies at once. And that's important to say because a game like this with the combat system as good as it is it is mind-blowing at times. The game does also have quick time events that are mostly used when dealing with boss battles or very fast moving scenes. For example, you'll have to chase down a car that's speeding away and you'll be able to jump onto the back of it during a QTE and that's probably the best way you can deal with those situations. The game also has stealth moments where you play as Mary Jane and I can't really complain about these moments because I understand that they're in the game to be able to serve the story and that definitely works. You just obviously will not have as much fun at times with Mary Jane as you have with Spider-Man himself. As for the performance of the game on the baseline PS4, I have nothing to really complain about. I noticed that there was a slight dip in frame rate when it, you know massive things are happening on screen, but not enough to impact my gameplay. 
visually the game looks as good as I kind of expected it to look. There's moments where I felt it looked a little flat based on the textures and the lighting systems in place, but it'll never take you out of the experience. Once you realize how big the city is and how much detail is already in the game, you'll never feel let down by how the game looks. I have to say I prefer playing around on the map during the day opposed to night because at night time I felt like the lights didn't really pop as much as they should have and I'd say the lighting is something they could have probably worked on a little bit more. This game is massive in scope. It's another knockout must own for the PlayStation 4. And in closing, I'm extremely impressed with the combat system here. You'll do everything you expect you could do as Spider-Man, and you'll do everything you would expect you would do in an open world game. Find collectibles, do a side mission, take down a random robber, or climb to the highest point of the map and just jump off, just to see what the hell happens. And yeah, I did do that, and guess what? It is amazing. I had said before that if they wanted to make a good Spider-Man game, they would have to focus on using the environments around Spider-Man to make the combat feel like it's on a new level. And that's exactly what they did here. I would equate this story to being a classic Spider-Man tale. There's an aspect of the story I can't really talk about here because I don't want to spoil it for you, but if you're a fan of Spider-Man and a fan of the Marvel films, there's a few moments here that'll make you tear up. The upgrade system can be confusing at the start, but you'll forgive it once you see what you're able to unlock. And lastly, the game can be repetitive. You'll do the same thing over and over, but I think what they've done here is the best that they can do with the Spider-Man world. I can't say it's the most original comic book video game because it borrows a lot of aspects from other games, but you know what they say, why fix something if it isn't broken, just improve upon it. I'm gonna give Spider-Man a solid, solid, solid 9 out of 10. It's a must-own day one purchase if you're a comic book fan, and even if you're not, it's a must own for everybody that has a PlayStation 4. Remember to click that subscribe button and hit the like button if you liked my review. I'll see you in the next episode of JKB.